Now, the stakes when it comes to the Prime Minister and the AWU scandal is starting to go through the roof, and they're not just for the Prime Minister. Now, as you know, I am not what Mark Latham affectionately refers to as a brucer. I'm not somebody who spends all day and all night swimming through documents desperately trying to find the smoking gun that proves the Prime Minister knew what her ex-boyfriend was doing with union funds some 17 years ago. But I did think that things have now started to take a rather interesting and very important tone. Major media organisations are now starting to report the story. It even made it all the way to Laurie Oakes' desk this evening. He, however, was making a point about whether or not bringing up this affair in Parliament is an example of personal politics that's gone too far. But the stakes, as I said, are getting high, not just for Julia Gillard, but also for Julie Bishop, the Deputy Liberal Leader, a significant figure, and clearly decided to now be the point person who will take this thing right up to the Prime Minister's doorstep. I say the stakes are getting high for her because she is the one who now, for three days in a row, in Parliament, has asked a question in connection with the entire world that is what Julia Gillard did and didn't know 17 years ago when she was in a relationship with a bloke called Bruce Wilson. Here's the question that was asked today and the reaction is very much what we'll talk about tonight. I refer to this cheque for over $67,000 from the AWU Workplace Reform Association made out to Slater and Gordon Trust Account funds used to purchase that property. As the lawyer advising on the conveyance, does the Prime Minister stand by her statement that she didn't know the money came from the union slush fund that she the had assisted in establishing? I have dealt with these matters on the public record extensively, and no amount of bellowing by those who sit opposite changes that in any way. Uh, all this is is a cover-up for the fact that they don't have and will never have a plan for the nation's future. Now, what is extraordinary about what is going on here is that clearly the Prime Minister is deeply distressed when these sorts of questions get raised. She might be deeply distressed because she knows what's around the corner, or she might be deeply distressed because she's tired of having to deal with these claims which have been going on at increasing volume for a very, very long time now. But also, Julie Bishop needs to understand that unless the opposition actually does have the smoking gun, then this is going to backfire on them and very quickly. Does anyone remember Godwin Gretsch? Do we all remember the documents that Malcolm Turnbull was willing to go into Parliament with and call for the resignation of the then Prime Minister Kevin Rudd? Now, if there is a smoking gun, this will be a titanic victory for the opposition. It will be a clear vindication of those that have been pushing for this story to receive mainstream media attention for a very long time. But the smoking gun is not going to come from something that Julia Gillard says inside the Parliament. There has to be a piece of paper, there has to be a person willing to come forward, otherwise it is going to be the opposition that is going to look very, very stupid in a couple of weeks' time. I am fascinated to see what happens in Parliament tomorrow, and don't forget, there is another week after that. Is this going somewhere? Well, time will only tell, but we are well and truly looking at both sides of politics.